The colonization of New England quickly and drastically changed the opinion about the importance of religion to the population. The reason for leaving England, among other things, was the religious freedom to practice Puritanism. Early settlements contained people who devoted their lives to Puritanism, leading little room for enjoyable activities. They based their laws and guiding principles on a theory that God punishes sinners, rationalizing disaster by scapegoating their own. As each new generation emerged in the colony, the significance of Puritanism decreased. By the mid-1700s, though colonists' attention to religion was still so prominent that the church and state were practically one, they had stopped blaming sinners for disasters. What was once believed to be a punishment from God was now seen as a natural disaster that prayer would guide them through. The Great Fire of 1760 sparked, literally, reactions from the colonists which highlighted their deviance from the Puritan beliefs. Of course, Puritan ministers expressed their opinions about the issue, like the sermon preached by John Thin Mayhew, pastor of the West Church in Boston, in which he stated, There are indeed many such sinners amongst us. If there be a real and sufficient foundation for them, we need not be at any loss for such causes of God's displeasure, as are common to us. At the same time, the general public shied away from blaming disasters on sinners. In fact, in a newspaper article from the Boston Evening Post on March 24th, describing the events of the same fire, there was not a singular mention of God. Dissemination of the population, in combination with the boatloads of new colonists, diluted the fear of God and the connection between sin and crime, though the prevalence of both was still undeniable. The settlers became enthralled with the opportunity for land, honor, and fortune. All across colonial times, settlers were distracted by the opportunities and dangers the New World presented. Even the respected John Winthrop indulged in a side project, creating Ten Hills Farm, that took time away from religious practice. Eventually, these distractions started to pile up so much that Puritanism faded into the background of colonial life. As signified by their title, Puritans believed themselves to be the pure and chosen people of God, thus those who would be absolved of sin and sent to heaven after death. It was their mission to save themselves and attempt to save the natives through Christianity. The English settlers believed their way was the right way, God's way, even after acknowledging the advanced technologies of the Native Americans forcing natives to assimilate and melt into New England culture. The initial journey to the New World was advertised as a mission to save the uncivilized, vulnerable natives that inhabited it, as shown by the seal of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Not only did the Puritans introduce the idea of public education, but they also started arguably the most prestigious and enduring institution in the country, Harvard University. Education started as a way to save children from Satan, as idleness and ignorance was thought to be sinful. Puritan families also saw the need for children to develop vocational skills for the survival of the colony. Families held religious studies in home meetings, often on Sundays, to teach children the necessities of religion and survival. By the mid-1600s, the importance of education had begun to become recognized as an issue that could be conquered as a community. Puritan ministers began to read lessons, though the family was still most influential in a more formal manner. In 1647, the Old Deluder Satan Act was passed, stating, It is therefore ordered that every township in this jurisdiction, after the Lord hath increased them to fifty households, shall forthwith appoint one within each town to teach all such children. And it is further ordered that when any town shall increase to the number of one hundred families or householders, they shall set up a grammar school. Jobs were created and children were educated as a result of this act. Boys and girls were separated to prevent sin and promote focus. This public education was not free. Families often paid tuition and firewood to allow schools to remain in session through the harsh New England winter. Everything that the colonists changed or created in the New World was a direct reaction to their current needs. Intelligent workers were required, and so they educated their children. Throughout this time period, though, education was mainly used to further religious understanding, the reason they came to America in the first place. Starting with at-home seminars on the Bible, moving to a more formalized Sunday school with ministers, and finally officializing with a government ordinance, the Puritan goal was always to hear the word of God and avoid the devil. Puritans equated idleness to evil and ignorance to sin. They believed, as God's chosen people, it was their duty to educate their youth so that children could study religious text and hear the word of God. The Puritans even went so far as to attempt to Christianize some natives through education, 
Whether they truly believe the natives could be saved is an arguable fact. Common catechisms, such as spiritual milk for Boston babes, not only required students to memorize religious texts, but also learn to apply them in such a way as to govern their morals. Again, the Puritan and English belief that their way was the right way created little room for deviation from the Puritan standards. The early settlers remained as loyal to the crown as the Atlantic would allow, begging England for more men and support as well as persuading them of the success of the new colony. As was their reason for displacement, early colonial government was led by Puritanism and Puritan leaders, who also served as government officials, like John Winthrop. In the beginning, religion determined your voice in government. Not only must you be Puritan to vote, but also highly educated in religion and a non-sinner. Some colonists did not agree with the strict union of church and state. Because of this, even in colonial times, a division began to occur. First Governor of Rhode Island, Roger Williams' frustration over taxes leads to the first town meeting in 1633, an action that creates a desire for representation all across New England. The Town Act of 1636 gave birth to town meetings and power to town leaders who are now in charge of deciding who can settle in their town. Even though their charter stated otherwise, average colonists did not have a voice in their own government. With Williams's and other less radical figures like Th Reverend Thomas Hooker's separation, the town meeting was created. Now, for the first time, people had a say in the rules they abided by. As colonial America began to thrive, the Crown began to see that this was not just a desperate measure for some radical Christians, but in fact an opportunity for expansion and success. But when England moved to take back control of her colony, settlers refused to relinquish their power. For the first time, the tension that pulled England and New England in opposite directions came into light, and neither side was willing to surrender. If this lack of representation sounds familiar, it's because it is. Just a few decades later, these people will be chanting, no taxation without representation, and throwing tea into the Boston Harbor. These same people denied a vote to any non-Puritans and Native Americans. Since their very first days, Americans have fought for their voice to be heard, a paradigm that still exists today. With as much disdain as Puritans viewed ignorance with, they displayed the same ignorance towards the Native people of America. Starting in England with the creation of the Massachusetts Bay Colony Seal, English disregard for Native civilization was blatant. As all things of this time period, Puritan leaders accredited their power to God, which they used to construct and govern New England for its first 100 years. Occurrences and trends like the forced assimilation of Native Americans demonstrated the settlers' view that their form of civilization was the only option for a successful society. Events like King Philip's War displayed their complete disregard for the well-being of others who inhabited America. God and religion were mentioned in most government documents, like the old Deluder Act, which was eventually questioned by some colonists, like Roger Williams. As the New World matured, people began to look around themselves and realize they were not as righteous as they perceived themselves to be. The English settlers who colonized America had an undeniable effect on life in their day, but their influence also saw echoes in today's society. As always, things changed for the Puritans, how they saw themselves and their surroundings, how they educated themselves, and how they governed themselves. Yet there is still a thread that held together their society, which can always be traced back to God.